This is part two of the Node Red Basics with Home Assistant. Some of you may already know this stuff. Stick around, you may learn something. It might be a little refresher for you. We're going to do some additional automations with Node Red, dig a little deeper. We may not get as intense as what's shown here. If you'd like to see a part three of the Node Red series, be sure and give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment below and let us know you want to see more Node Red. Let's get to it. So let's do one with presence detection. If you remember, we have the mock variable for the group of the adults called the Travis and April group. So let's delete the big timer here. And these two injects. And if you want to, we can you can grab a box and drag stuff around. So what you'll want to do is you want to look for the events state when something changes, as in someone leaves. So we'll drag it out here and we'll say adults left. We'll use the home assistant server and the sensor is going to be that group, Travis and April group, and we'll change it to exact. We're done. Now we'll need a switch to decision based on how did it change? Did they arrive or did they leave? So we'll do arriving and you can call this whatever you want or leaving. And the states that typically is used in presence is home, we'll add, and not home. And where you can find the exact states of an entity, you can use the debug node. If you drag out this node here and you hook it up, And we'll deploy it. If you flip over to the little bug at the top right corner, let's change the home assistant and we'll change both of these people to not home. And now you'll see the debug of the entity change to not home. So if you don't know an entity of what the payload will be, it's a very powerful feature is the debug message. And you can insert these on all throughout your flow to determine what a message might be. So we'll set this back to home and home. And you'll see that we now have another debug message of home. So if you look here on the right, it says home and then not home. So we'll drag these nodes we used before. So when someone leaves, we don't want all the lights on. When everybody left the house, we want all the lights to turn off. So we'll deploy and we'll watch in the bottom right corner. One person leaves, lights are still on. Another person leaves and the lights go off. Now one thing you may wanna do, depending on your presence detection, you can add in a delay. It's very simple. Drop it in. It defaults to five seconds. And we'll connect both of those and deploy. Let's turn them back on. When they change to not home, it's going to wait for five seconds and it should turn the lights out. Now let's finish the flow. We want the lights to turn back on in the kitchen when someone arrives. So we'll grab just the blue one and deploy it. So when the wife gets home, the kitchen light comes on. So the kitchen light will be automatically on when she arrives. So it's very simple to do a simple presence detection flow of on and off lights in Node Red. So a common thing we do in Node Red, I always see people ask about, is doing a motion light. And I use it in my home for a hallway light and also a living room light. When someone gets up in the middle of the night, the motion sensors will automatically turn on lights at a low brightness to give them an easy way to walk through the house. And once there's no motion, it turns the lights back off. So what I've done, if you look in the bottom right, I have a simple touch button that is mocked up as a motion sensor. So if you look on the screen, I'm going to touch it 
it will go to detected motion and like a motion sensor it'll go back to clear but of course someone doesn't walk that fast so to do this we're going to node red down to the home assistant let's go to events changed go to motion the node red motion we'll just call it button motion exact and hit done so the next thing we may want to do is let's get the state of the adults adults home that was a group and you can do this two ways you can do a halt if so we can do a halt if not home and so what happens is if the motion changes and no one's home say for instance the dog walks by this will stop and the light won't turn on because the dog or the cat keeps running around the house so next is it dark outside so one easy way to do that you could do a time base let's just ask home assistant with the sun sun you can either use the debug or we can go to the states of all the entities it is below horizon right now so we'll copy that state and just to show use a switch again we won't use the halt if we can do below horizon and you can just put one in here if you just want to make it stop. So the sun down. So, so far when the motion changes, it asks a home assistant, is there anybody home? Get the sun position. If it's below horizon, we'll continue on. Next, we need to get the motion state. And visually in node red, you can put these however you want. As long as they're connected, whatever makes sense to you. Motion state. And it's going to be node red motion. And then we'll do a switch to make a decision based on if the motion is there or not. So we'll do on or off so we'll do an on add and off done now we have two legs now we need to see is the light already on so we'll get the current state we'll do the multi lights multi already like a type light dot multi get the state of multi and we'll use the halt if on because we don't need to send command to turn it on again if it's already on in case the motion keeps triggering within this time period here which we're about to do so the next piece if it's not on let's call the service to turn it on turn on multi the main is light turn on entity multi and multi done and let's save what we got just in case next thing what we'll want to do is now we need to fix the off because to test it touch the motion the lights turn on to build the off we're going to use a node we installed a while ago called stop timer and we'll connect it up to here and for the sake of this video we'll leave it at five seconds you may want to use something like 
three minutes, two minutes, depending on your home, that someone would be moving through to leave the lights on for them. I'll copy this one to turn on multi, but we'll change the name to turn off multi and turn off instead of turn on. So they're having to repick everything. And we'll use the top node to turn off. Deploy we have. So if we follow through, what happens is the motion changes. Is everybody home? Is the sun down? Let's get the motion state. Is it on or off? How did it change? If it's on, meaning motion detected, and the light's not already on, turn the light on. If the motion flips to off, what it will happen is it'll follow through here and go into a five second hold. And again, you'll want to do this longer for your home and it'll turn off the multi light after five seconds. And one problem you might have, you didn't think of if someone continues to move around, you'll want to continue to trigger and reset the five second clock or in your case, possibly the two minute clock. So to do that is simply dump the on back into the five second hold like so, and we'll deploy it. And to test it, we'll push the button and I'll keep pushing it as we keep moving around the room. That'll reset that five second clock. So if someone keeps walking around, the lights won't turn off on them, but as soon as they leave and stop moving and the clock runs out, the lights turn off. So of course you could do this with multiple motion sensors to feed into a pool of motion sensors or do multiple lights. You could add different delays off of here where you can have one light delay and then turn off to kind of do a staggered on and off if you'd like. It's really up to you and you can see there's no real coding again. It's all just thinking things out in a more of a business process of your flow and you connect everything together. It's kind of a little advanced and piles on some of the different things we learned is based on the video I did with the voice notifications based off the S31 power. I can determine with my gas dryer if the wattage is about five to six watts that someone left the door open because that's just the light on on the dryer. So every 10 minutes I have a notification through Google letting us know that someone left the dryer door open. To do this, first let's test a call service to the Google speaker. We'll just say Google says. And the TTS notification through Google speakers are, is pretty nice because it's very simple to set up. It comes straight working out of the box with Home Assistant. No special add-ons or anything. Say Google Say to TID, craft room speaker, and open the thing. It's going to be message. You left the dryer door open and then we'll close it and it will verify the JSON for you hit done and we'll do an inject to test it so you can push the button deploy we'll hit the button to test it you left the dryer door open great works now let's build the automation. So what we have is the door state dummied up in an input select for the sake of the video. And this would be an open or the closed. And of course this could be a back door to the house or a front door to the house. If you want to remind people they left the door open, you could use this to the door to the refrigerator or the freezer, whatever you want to constantly nag you that you forgot to close something. So to do this, We'll go to the state changed and we'll say dryer door 
dryer door. Exact. Done. Now we need a switch. So we want to know how it changed. And it is case sensitive. So it's open or closed. We'll do it open, add, closed, and done. So once it opens, we don't want to annoy people right away. So we'll put a stop timer. Now for the sake of the video, we'll do it for 10 seconds. We may have to change that, but we'll find out if I can flip back and forth quick enough. We'll detach this. Move this down here. So if the door stays open, Google's going to annoy them. Now what happens if they close it within the 10 seconds? Is we need to send a stop message to this stop timer. So if you look on the node help of the stop timer, if you send in a payload of lowercase stop or uppercase stop, it will stop the timer. So there is an, another node called a change node. And we'll set the message payload. We'll do a send stop. And we'll change the payload to stop. So if the door closes, it's going to change the payload of the message to stop. And it pushes that into the stop timer. Now the only problem is, is once this runs once, it's not going to run anymore. So to continue running is we need to connect this back here. We'll save it. So if you think this out, the door changes. Did the door become open or closed? If it became open, let's wait 10 seconds. If nothing else happened, then we'll announce you left the door open and then we'll loop back around and wait for 10 seconds again. If the inside that 10 seconds, if the door closes, we need to tell the timer to stop. We've deployed it. And let's give it a shot. So the door is closed. Let's open it. It's running. We should hear a message here in a second. You left the dryer door open. Okay. If we don't close it, let's see if it runs again. You can see it say running. You left the dryer door open. So it'll keep annoying you until you close it. Let's hurry up and close it. And you come back and you'll see, since it closed, it sent the stop payload to the stop timer. So it stopped the 10 second continuing to annoy us, which stopped this loop going around. So that's a real simple way to do something for the refrigerator, freezer, front door, back door, etc. Someone's constantly leaving something on and like the kids forget something. It's an easy way you can blast through all the speakers, annoy them to close whatever it is or turn off whatever it is. So I hope you enjoyed this second video of Node Red. I know I got a lot of comments on the first video. It's overwhelming support. I'm glad I was able to help out a bunch of people in the various Node Red automations and get started on everything. Be sure and let us know if you want to do another Node Red video and we'll try to put something together and go a little deeper with some things. So be sure and subscribe and share the channel. Hit the bell notification so you can see our next video. Now keep watching and take care.